Okay, good evening, everyone. It is six o'clock and we're going to go ahead and get started. I, I know um, people will continue to uh, join us in the next little while, but thank you for joining us for the redistricting priority areas information and input session. Tonight, we will focus on the proposal to address overcapacity at Colonial Trail and Rivers Edge Elementary Schools with school board members Mickey Ogburn, vice chair from the Three Chop District. Mickey, if you want to give a wave out and Christy Kinsella from the Brooklyn District. Say hello, Christy. I'm Sean Gilliland with Communications and will serve as the session's facilitator. Also joining us this evening are members of the Henrico team. We have Chris Sorensen, Chief Financial Officer, and Justin Briggs, School Planner. Before we hear from them and then from you, I'd like to start with some quick housekeeping details. We want to make everyone aware that this evening's session is being recorded and will be posted on the redistricting page tomorrow. To speak, please raise your hand by using the raise your hand icon or simply type I'd like to make a comment in the meeting chat and include your name. Speakers will be announced in groups of three and we will do our best to call on speakers in order. Please be courteous and respectful. We ask that you keep your mic muted until it is your turn to speak. Please state your name and school affiliation if you choose before speaking. To allow time for as many speakers as possible, we are asking that you keep your comments to approximately 90 seconds or less. And again, as a reminder, this is an informal opportunity to provide input on the proposal to address overcapacity at Colonial Trail and Rivers Edge Elementary Schools. This is one of three priority areas of concern being considered for possible solutions by the school board. A vote on the priority areas proposals is tentatively scheduled for January 28th. This is an input session, but written comments should be submitted on the public comment form not typed in the meeting chat. The link to the public comment form can be found in the chat box. Board members Mickey Ogburn and Christy Kinsella are here to listen to your input and to answer your questions on behalf of the school board. So let's have them get us started with some brief remarks. Let's start with Mrs. Ogburn. I think you're, there you go. Uh, and there we go. That's a perennial problem. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I know we have people still coming in, uh, but I thought I would take just a second and thank Sean for moderating tonight and for uh, Chris Sorensen and Justin Briggs for the presentation they're going to show everybody, which I think will answer a lot of your questions right up front. Um, but I wanted to thank them too for putting this meeting together. It's a great opportunity for us all to to learn more and to answer your questions, hear what you're thinking, um, to to find out, just basically get a pulse of of the district and see what uh, people's uh, pain points are. But um, basically, to give you an overview, I've been on the board for six and a half, going on my seventh year, and. Um, for many years, Colonial Trail Elementary School has been overcrowded, and it is, um, you know, Cackley Elementary School right mm -hmm. next door is um, it's under capacity. And then we have Rivers Edge that is over capacity, and I know that one of the things I hear consistently is many of the neighborhoods in Three Chopped and, and, and areas of Brooklyn have been moved many mm -hmm. times as new schools have been built, as development has happened, but um, that has its, um, the, the pluses and the minuses of that. Obviously we are in a high growth area and uh, we have to have seats for all of our kids, but River's Edge is especially overcrowded. We're worried about that. We wanna be sure that we have a good plan going forward. So tonight, Christy Cattell and I are in the whole staff are here to listen to your concerns. We will answer your questions if we can. If we can't answer your question tonight, we will get back with you and um, and, and do that as, as quickly as we can. Um, I know up front, I will tell you, I've been asked why now? Why in the middle of a pandemic? Why are you even thinking about this? And I thought I would just address that right off the top of the bat. Um, we have, as I said, we have some overcrowded schools. The development in that area is continuing. And we are concerned that as we go forward, especially Rivers Edge Elementary is going to get even more crowded than it is now. 
So we'd like to have a plan going forward we can all um, live with and, and it meets the needs of our kids. We'd like to prevent the use of trailers. And, um, and so that's basically it in a nutshell. This development is not waiting and it is continuing. So as we go forward, we, like I said, we just wanna have a plan that works best for all the kids and hopefully prevent the use of trailers. So I will throw it over to Ms. Kinsella and uh, then uh, we will go from there. Well, thank you, Ms. Ogburn. I just want to thank staff as well and thank everybody uh, for joining us this evening. As, as someone in the Brooklyn District who's familiar with overcrowding and trailers, I mean, I know one of my elementary schools currently has nine. So we want to be uh, a proactive board that, that, that sees the growth and, and tries to prevent the use of trailers as short-term solutions. Um, so we just appreciate everyone for joining us this evening as we try to come up with the best solutions, uh, long-term solutions, I would hope, for our students and, and families. So thank you all for being here. I want to leave uh, time basically just for the presentation and questions, but thank you for being here. Great. Thank you both for those remarks and Mrs. Ogburn, especially for that, that, that explanation of why now. At this time, um, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Sorensen, and he will review the specifics of the proposal to address overcapacity at Colonial Trail and River's Edge. Chris? Yep. Thanks, Sean. Uh, good evening, everyone. Sean said my name is Chris Sorensen, and uh, Justin Briggs and I have been putting together some presentations, and I'm happy to go over tonight. Justin is the school planner, and he uh, has the details on this can certainly help us answer any questions you might have later on. So just real quickly, the role of the school board in this process, obviously we have two board members with us tonight. So just the, the high level role of the school board is to set policy for the school division, to uh, adopt a budget for us to operate annually, to hire the superintendent, redistricting while we're all here tonight to set school attendance boundaries, and also really uh, feeds into the capital and strategic planning. Certainly redistricting has an impact on our capital planning. And uh, so those are the five primary roles of the school board. Again, uh, Ms. Ogram went over some of these things, but uh, the school board did set three priority areas, one of which is the Northwestern Elementary School that we're talking about here tonight, the Northwestern Elementary area that has overcrowding that we're here to talk about tonight. Um, both schools were projected to exceed capacity 100% in this current school year. And the proposal we're going to talk about tonight, really, the base is the D4 option from the redistricting committee at the elementary level only. There are some modifications. It is not exactly D4, but D4 was the basis of what you're going to see here in a minute. These are the current zones. I think everybody's familiar with these. Um, so this is uh, how the zones are laid out now. And then this is the proposal to discuss tonight. So again, those of you that are familiar with the D4 maps, you'll, you'll recognize some of these, these moves. There are some slight variations, but the bulk of it is uh, goes back to D4. So to look at that map in a different manner, these are the students that are in the proposal will be moved to new schools. In total, 490 students would be moved. And you can see some go from Cackley to Colonial Trail. Then Colonial Trail sends some to Twin Hickory, uh, Twin Hickory to Cackley, River's Edge to Springfield Park, Springfield Park sends other students to Longin, and then Longin sends students to Echo Lake. So again, 490 students in total would be moved in this proposal. Uh, just to show you some of the reasons why we're doing this, again, the capacity Ms. Ogburn and Ms. Kinsella both talked about earlier. Colonial Trail was, was projected to be at 100, nearly 105%. With this plan, uh, the capacity is projected to be just slightly over 89%. Echo Lake would gain students in this proposal. They'd go from nearly 77% to 86.5%. Cackley, as Ms. Ogburn stated, is, uh, has a lot of capacity, projected to be at 70%. They would gain 115 students in this proposal and be at 87.5 percent. Longin, a couple moves I just mentioned for Longin, and they would uh, have a net loss of 17 students, have a slight decrease from about 98 percent to 94 percent of capacity. River's Edge would lose 39 students to Springfield Park. They would go from a projected 113 percent down to 108 percent. Springfield Park also has a couple moves. They would uh, in net lose four students and fall just a little bit from 91% to 90.5%. And Twin Hickory, again, a couple moves for Twin Hickory, but they 
uh, with net losing eight students and go from 83% projected to 81.8% projected. Do want to point out to you, see a footnote at the bottom of that, that Ms. Kinsella is having a, uh, a meeting on, on the 17th to discuss the redistricting associated with the opening of holiday, the addition to holiday elementary school. So both Echo Lake and Longman would be involved in, in those moves as well. Holiday elementary school is only at the preschool level. So Echo Lake and Longman have some preschool classrooms and they would be, uh, some of the students would be moved to holiday. But I just did want to disclose that there are some other potential moves involved in those two schools. So some of the comments are with the enrollment changes we're experiencing this year, do we do we have the, the, the data necessary to move forward with the plan? We think we do. Colonial Trail, you can see the schools involved in this, in this plan. The first column of numbers is the projected enrollment for September 30th, and then the last column is our actual September 30th enrollment. So all the schools are 90% are or greater of what we expected. You can see some of them are right at 98, 99% the actual enrollment to what we projected to have. So we, we do feel that the data is good to move forward with this proposal, at least discuss this proposal if it should go forward. Uh, let's go with the timeline. In September, the board discontinued the comprehensive redistricting process and focused on what we call at the time hotspots. We now uh, change that to priority areas. Uh, October 8th, we presented three areas to the school board, one of which, of course, is why we're here tonight. There are three meetings. One was uh, last week on the second. One is obviously here for tonight. And I just mentioned Ms. Kinsella is having one on November 17th. December 10th, the school board will have a, a public meeting, a public hearing rather. And then as Sean said earlier on January 28th, the tentative approval date for the school board for any plans that, that go forward and are under consideration on the 28th. So that was my summary uh, going forward. You know, just want to go through that quickly and then leave time for plenty of questions and answers. OK, thank you so much, Chris, for sharing those specifics. And now it is your turn to talk. And uh, so you can start uh, raising your hand and getting in line to ask your questions or provide some input on the proposal. And again, we want to hear from you um, from as many of you as possible. And uh, we want to try to keep your comments to about 90 seconds or less so that we can get to everyone this evening. And we're going to call on the first three speakers and we will proceed in order through the list. And again, we are asking for your patience in advance. So to begin, do we have folks in line? Let's see, I don't see any hands raised at the moment. So remember, this is your opportunity, I do now. Jessica Bulos, you are first in line. Please remember Hi. to unmute your mic and you may begin. Hi, yes, good evening. Um, I'm a parent of an FIS classroom child at Colonial Trail. I'm wondering if any of that um, shifting will be affecting FIS classroom children or if you already know that answer. Yeah, or even AIS, but the special needs children that are already being bused to a particular school or not. He's a third grader, so that would be awful difficult in my mind to have to have him change teachers and learn everything new with a new teacher, especially after the adjustments of the pandemic already. Thank you, Jessica. Who would like to jump in on that question? Um, I will um, tell you I am not positive of your the answer because um, at this point, from what I understand, we are only talking about um, moving families in dedicated neighborhoods and not programs. So um, that I think we can double check if like um, if you will send me an email tomorrow and um, or you can uh, tonight or whatever and or um, you can send me a, a text message on my phone, something like that. So I can get an answer to you. But at this point, from what we have talked about, if you don't live in the zone that's being moved, I don't think that that would affect you. That seems to make sense to me, actually. Because yeah, I'm looking at zones. All right, thank you. I will. I think I'm right. Wouldn't you think that I makes agree. sense? But I'll right. check. All right, thank you both. Next in line, we have Nathaniel Garden. Nathaniel, please go ahead with your question or comment. Hello, this is uh, Joe Gardner. I'm Nathaniel's father. Um, we have three boys that are in the River's Edge District, so we are contributing to the problem. Um, 
I appreciate all y'all's work for redistricting and trying to figure out the solution to this. Um, but I was surprised to see that River's Edge has the worst overcapacity and uh, the redistricting is only gonna shift about 40 students away. And in the end, we're still over capacity to such an extent that we're still more over capacity than Colonial Trail is to start with. Um, so I'm really happy that y'all were able to find a solution to shift Colonial Trail students away um, to help solve their situation. But it looks like River's Edge still has a worse problem than Colonial Trail has right now. So I was wondering if you could comment about that. And thank you. I, I actually will. And and I had a feeling after seeing those charts that we would get this question. I started to talk about it at the beginning. The problem that we have, just, you know, um, if you look at the area that feeds into River's Edge, the problem that we have is we have essentially two large neighborhoods. And in order to substantially affect the River's Edge feeder pattern and the, the attendance zone at River's Edge. We would essentially have to take out the whole Sadler Road community. That's roughly, you know, 250, 300 kids. And we wouldn't, we, at this point in time, we don't have anywhere to move them that would take that whole area. And, you know, we make a, um, we talk about this a lot, that we make a concerted effort not <clears throat> excuse me, not to split communities, not to split neighborhoods. And at this point in time, if you look at the attendance zone, it's right around River's Edge, and then it's south of 295, and you've got the Sadler Road community. And so the, we looked at it, we've talked about it. The committee, this, um, I talked to all of our representatives on the committee, and this was the number one thing they struggled with. Um, Mrs. Kinsella at one of her meetings said a sentence that I'm going to steal and repeat. We can't redistrict our way out of that problem. And so what we're going to have to do is look at other solutions for River's Edge. And that is going to have to, at some point in time when we can get the funding to build more capacity in that area um, in some fashion. And I, 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 you know, this is, this is something we're working on. We're going to have to continue to work on, but funding is is the issue there, of course, because anything we do, whether it's a new school, addition, whatever, that takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money. So what we decided to do was to kind of leave River's Edge. We moved a few kids into Springfield Park, but not disrupt any more than we have to, knowing that at some point in time in the future, we will probably have to build something new and we don't want to redistrict anybody more than once in a few years. So we, we felt like the staff at River's Edge is so top notch and they have done such a good job of living in that space that we could move some kids, make a difference, but hold fast for a while with River's Edge until we have the ability to move one, you know, a big chunk of people, I'm not saying it's necessarily Sadler Road, but that we would have the ability to move entire communities, entire neighborhoods and not split people up. So I hope that answers your question a little bit. Thank you, Mrs. Ogburn, and thank you, Nathaniel, for your question. I would like to remind everyone in the meeting that this is your time. It's your opportunity to ask your questions and to make your comments. We have board members and staff members here that are, are um, wanting to hear from you and wanting to listen. Um, next in line, we have, and I'm going to mess up some, some of these names and I apologize in advance, and please correct me when you introduce yourself. Uh, next in line, we have Ra Rava Kumar. Hey, hi, uh, good evening. Uh, um, my daughter is studying in uh, Colonial Trail Elementary School in the first grade. Um, and uh, the question I have is, uh, with respect to the redistricting, um, does it impact the all grades for a particular school or is it specific to few grades, like uh, fourth or fifth grade kind of thing? I mean, when you say, over capacity, how you are deciding? Is it across grades in a school? And uh, that is one question. The other question I have is when you map it, right? How do you 
try to map the alternate uh, school for the redistricting? Is it based on the uh, nearby schools or based on the community? Uh, how do you try to segregate and map it? Okay, who's going to take that one? I'm, I mean, I can start if you want me to. And then, Chris, you want to jump in after me? Sure. Um, first of all, it is across all grades. This is, um, we, are, we have looked at um, communities and areas that we can move that um, are in close proximity to other schools. And so if you looked at that, if you were able to see that list, Chris, I don't know if you can share that again, the number of kids that are moving um, from each school. I think that might help because we have um, a number of kids coming out of Colonial Trail. And when you see that we've got um, a number, all these kids coming out of Colonial Trail, for example, 149 moving to Twin Hickory, um, we are... Um, we are moving them across grades and it's based on their proximity to Twin Hickory and to Cackley. And so that answers one question, but have we decide it's, it's complicated actually. Um, we, we do it mostly on proximity, but we talk to our transportation folks and we look at bus routes. We look at uh, travel distances for the kids. And we also look at, I mean, for lack of a better way, what makes sense? Um, when we look at uh, where the school is located and what neighborhoods can we move together, um, one of the things, I said this earlier, I'll say it again, one of the things we like to try to do is keep neighborhoods together. And we want to be sure that we're not breaking up communities. That's one of the nice things about the plan that the committee came up with is they bring the Twin Hickory community back together in um, Twin Hickory Elementary. Twin Hickory neighborhood has been divided in half between the two schools for a number of years. And the committee thought that was important to bring them back together. But Mr. Sorensen, I don't know if you want to add anything to what I said, but um, no, no, I think, period. Uh, Ms. Ivan, I think I would just uh, emphasize that uh, a couple of things you said, again, uh, stated earlier that the proposal tonight is based on what the redistricting committee did earlier. And so um, Ms. Ogden talked about transportation. Well, the redistrict committee had the transportation folks in for several meetings to understand traffic patterns. Um, the, the, the committee was made up of folks that live in the neighborhood. So again, Ms. Ogden touched on this, but we had people that live in the neighborhoods that, 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 know, that know how the different subdivisions work together. And so we had a lot of input that was done earlier that we're using in this proposal to go forward. And it is kind of like putting a puzzle together that you do look at transportation, you do look at neighborhoods, but then you're trying to balance that capacity in several different schools uh, while, while, while you're looking at those different components. Does that help? Right. We hope that answered your question, Rava Kumar. Thank you for both of those questions. We appreciate it. Next in line, we have Paul Shaw. Go ahead with your question or comment. Yeah, good evening. So um, I'm a parent of two kids at Longan, and I had a question like, there are going to be 60 students moving from Longan to Eco Lake. Uh, the question is, how would I know that if uh, my kids are impacted by that? Or is it going to, are you going to randomly, I mean, I, I see that, that, that you, are, you are going to be looking at the proximity and stuff, but how would I know, you know, whether I am being impacted or not? That's question number one. And then question number two is, if say my kids go to Eco Lake, and at some point down the road, will you be doing a redistricting of the middle school and high school that now be, down, now that you are at Eco Lake, you will have a different middle school or different high school. Are you guys gonna be looking at that in conjunction with this as well? Who would like to, to start with an answer? Um, I guess I'll start, but I really feel like deferring to Justin or Chris as to how it works out as to how families are notified that they're affected. And then as to the, the specific uh, feeder patterns associated with the middle school and high school. Um, Chris or Justin? Um, I, so I am posting the, uh, the boundary, uh, boundary lookup into the chat. So you will, um, if you click on the link, you can put your address in the search box. 
and that will tell you whether or not your address is impacted and how it is impacted. So for instance, if you're going from long into Echo Lake, um, that that will show up for elementary school or if, uh, you're being impacted for middle school, it might say you're going from Cuyahoga to Tuckahoe or vice versa. So I am posting that link into the chat right now. So that should um, that should uh, provide some clarification. I mean, Chris, Chris and Justin, if I'm correct, that the, the families that were going from Long End to Echo Lake are not impacted at the middle school and high school, from what I recall, when we discussed this, correct? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. And, Thank and, you. And, and just to follow up on what Justin said, I said Justin's putting something in the chat now that folks can access to look now, but when the school board approves the plan, families will also be notified of if they're impacted or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kintal, for your questions, and we hope that we provided you some good information there. Yeah. Moving mm -hmm. moving forward, uh, we have Heidi Filial in line. Heidi, go ahead with your question or comment. Yeah, thank you. Um, I live in Mill Race, which is a neighborhood off Shady Grove Road, a little bit down from the fire station. Um, I, I hadn't looked at this map again until tonight. D4 originally showed all of Shady Grove neighborhoods going to Cackley. And I see this map has several carved out or at least one carved out that stays at Twin Hickory. My question or my, my comment is um, the neighborhood, I, I can't remember the name of it. It's down by uh, the fire station, directly by the fire station, my neighborhood, and the one next to mine, Hames Lane. These are kind of older established neighborhoods, no more growth there, not that many elementary students. The, the home sizes are small. There's only like 30 neighbor of uh, the houses in our neighborhoods. Um, and yet, but we're being moved to Cackley, which we are at the furthest of the, the districting map for Cackley. When we can walk to Twin Hickory Elementary and do so often, we walk and ride our bikes. The rest of Shady Grove Road is staying at Twin Hickory, and this is such a small impact of number of kids. I would hope that you would consider keeping them at Twin Hickory for continuity for them as there's no need to move them out of Twin Hickory, considering that your numbers are showing Twin Hickory would have a net loss of students um, and would have plenty of capacity. So there's three neighborhoods on this road that are now moving and then one that's staying um, compared to what I think E4 had them all together. So um, I'm just wondering, I know, uh, Mickey, you know, you said, you know, keeping communities together. Um, we're not technically all one community, but we do live off the same road in the same way that the Sadler Road communities do. And we are very close to Twin Hickory Elementary School proximity wise to be able to walk and ride bikes. Um, so I strongly encourage you to consider that and um, hopefully we can stay where we are. <laughs> Now, and, and I understand, I really do. I have, uh, I'm really familiar with that area. And we, uh, we looked at just recently the, the communities off of Shady Grove Road. The problem is, is where do you make that dividing line? And where, which neighborhoods go to Cackley, which ones go to Twin Hickory? We've looked at it, I mean, seriously, um, close. We've zoomed in on on roads and streets. We've counted kids and and bus transportation and all of that. Um, the difficulty is with Shady Grove Road is where do you cut it off? Where do you go all the way up to Hampshire up to the neighborhoods above that? And and some of those neighborhoods have a lot of kids in them. And so the committee felt like those neighborhoods off of Shady Grove Road should go to Cackley. And so, but there are two neighborhoods on the lower part of Shady Grove Road, uh, near Hames Road and below. Um, the dividing line at this point is Hames Road. And so they, um, the committee had that area going to, um, to Cackley, but transportation, you're, I understand what you're saying, because when you get out of your neighborhood, you can turn right or you turn left. And when you turn right, you're not far from Twin Hickory. The problem is, is Twin Hickory can't hold all of the area that we're talking about. And so we've looked at it closely at this point in time. We're thinking we um, the the schools on the, the houses on um, uh, Shady Grove Road would sort of separate right on the other side of Haynes Road. There's a big patch of woods and you know so it's sort of divided up and we looked at that as an area to divide um but we need kid we, you know it we need kids to move into cackling and 
We need, we know that there is other development coming in the area. So we need to leave a cushion at every school. And um, doing this proposal that like Chris Sorensen said earlier is based on what the committee work um, resulted in leaves every school under capacity with the exception of River's Edge. And so we're, you know, we're still think we're still looking at it. We're going to look at uh, the feedback from the community. But at this point, the map does cut uh, Shady Grove Road in half. I hear you. Thank you, Mrs. Ogbert. And Heidi, thank you for your uh, for your input. We have two folks that are currently waiting in line, so I just wanted to remind everyone that this is your opportunity to get, get your questions answered and to provide some input on the proposal. So please take advantage of this time and raise your hand, or, uh, use the raise your hand icon if you would like to speak or you know, drop your name into the chat. Next in line, we have Keith Lippa. Keith, go ahead with your question or comment. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, my name is Keith Lippa. I have kids that are at Echo Lake and also at Hungry Creek uh, Middle. We are in the group that is to be slotted to move from Longin. I'm sorry, my kids are in Longin, and we are in the group to be slotted from Longin to Echo Lake. Um, I just wanted to send some positive feedback to say thank you for all the efforts. Um, that little corridor that I represent, which is uh, census tracks 10314 and 16309, the ones that are slotted to move from Long into Echo Lake, we are definitely in support of this proposal. I think it facilitates the movement of all the other schools in the northwestern part of the county. And I just wanted to say that we were an advocate for this change. We appreciate this change. It does not affect our middle school or our high school. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Keith. We love it when people want to thank us. That's great. <laughs> I was going to say, if I could just jump out and throw a special thanks um, to your advocacy, Keith, and for following the process and for all the neighborhoods there that I've met with um, over time. I really appreciate your involvement and all the feedback the communities there have given. So thank you. We appreciate it. Great. Thank you. All right, moving on in um, in our in our list, we have um, again. I think Nathaniel Garden, and I believe uh, it's his dad, jo Joe, if I remember correctly. Um, I think you might have a, another question or comment. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for remembering. Um, yeah, follow up question for the River's Edge uh, scenario. I was just wondering when y'all look into this, is this just a geography question, or are y'all also looking into class size? Um, teacher student ratios, that kind of thing. Because we've been here in River's Edge for about six years and year to year, we, we see a slow increase in the size of the class and, and we feel for our teachers. Um, I appreciate that you all know that River's Edge has an amazing staff, I totally agree. Um, so I was wondering if, if, if that's up to y'all to decide the temporary solution for River's Edge. Um, and I also really understand the Sadler situation. Yeah. I appreciate that answer. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Um, it is up to the, um, ultimately up to the board to decide attendance zones. The superintendent oversees the SAP on the day-to-day -day stuff, but um, it will be up to us to make the decision. It is up to us to figure out how this all works and put the, um, what our staff needs in place. And so part of looking at what the school needs and programming is looking at uh, pupil teacher ratio. And ever since I've been on the board, the river's edge numbers have been going up. And as more homes are built in that section of the county, it is putting a squeeze on our elementary schools the most. I mean, we just a couple years ago redistricted the middle schools in that area, and we've had um, you know, a, a good reduction in the overcrowding at Hungry Creek. We moved kids at Holman and Short Pump Middle to try and even out the, the middle schools. But absolutely, one of the things that drives this is that not only the overall numbers of, of our capacity, but it's, you know, those individual classrooms as well. So we do look at pupil-teacher ratio because we know that the best learning um, happens in a class where it's manageable for a teacher. And, you know, it, it is um, fortunate for us that we have such a, you're right, a great staff at River's Edge. And, and uh, Mrs. Kinsella and I both are always in the schools when we can be in the schools, not right now. But, um, you know, we have a good relationship with our principals. We stay in touch. We know where the pain points are. 
but one of the things you can't only look at um, the capacity of a school from a teacher pupil ratio perspective you have to look at stress on the library stress on the cafeteria stress on the infrastructure of of art classes, music classes, PE, all of that stuff. And you want to be sure that the kids are in a class size where they can learn at their most optimal, you know, fashion. And so, you know, one of the things that it, at uh, River's Edge that is an issue is the capacity of the cafeteria and that kind of thing. And I mean, while I big library, big music room, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, when you get a lot of kids in the building, you wind up having um, an, an extended lunch uh, problem and you have you know, possibly even having to add another section of lunch. You have um, an inability of your special classes to all fit into the art room, things like that. And so, like I said earlier, the, the staff at River's Edge has been dealing with this for such a long time. But the problem that we have uncovered in the last uh, probably year, year and a half, especially during the redistricting process, was that the consultant that we had working with the redistricting committee has made a prediction for the growth in the area of River's Edge. And we're looking at rising numbers continuing for the foreseeable future. So that's why we're trying to let the area hold fast now and then come up with a more long term solution that will help the growth of the whole area. Because this isn't just happening um, in the three chop district in River's Edge. This is happening for Mrs. Kinsella as well. And there are new developments being planned in the Longan area, the Echo Lake area. It, it is it is coming. We know it. And so you know, that's one way that the county works with us so closely. And, um, you know, and, and it's a great relationship that we have with our planning department. And Justin meets with them regularly to give us the information about what's coming, to give us time to to address it in a long-standing sort of way. Thank you, Mrs. Ogburn, for explaining how that works. And Joe, thank you again for your follow-up question. And right now the floor is open. And I just want to remind everyone that we have board members here that want to hear from you. So please jump in there if you have questions or you want to provide some input on the proposal um on the um overcapacity at, at at uh to address the overcapacity at colonial trail and river's edge now is now is your turn to jump in there and i think sarah has her hand up i see sarah in line now so sarah go ahead hi um i'm actually a um river's edge parent i have two elementary age kids now and i'm in the sadler corridor and i you know you talked about um how the way to to deal with that would be adding on to the school or bring building a new elementary school um can you give a rough idea of how long that process typically takes sure um i i can um one of the things we are looking at now is our uh, capital uh, plan for the future uh, we are exploring all of the possibilities so i would think the earliest we could expect um, a decision between the county and us looking for, you know, looking down the road is, um, you know, several years before we can even get this on the, the radar, so to speak. I mean, this is going to have to involve another bond referendum. A project of any size does have to involve a bond referendum. And so, for example, if we were to add on to a school, that's nine nine million dollars or so if we build a new school you're looking at 30 million to to build a new elementary school at this point though honestly i don't think we have enough capacity need to build a whole new school and the problem is any of us who live in that area you know there's not a there's not as a, a lot of space available so um you know, finding the land that would be appropriate would be difficult. So one of the things we're looking at is expanding current schools. And that takes that takes time. We're in the, the capital planning process right now. It'll be a topic of our in our meeting on Thursday where the staff will share with us, um, you know, what's coming up 
and what projects we're going to be looking at. Uh, we talked about this at our last meeting. So we're looking at, I would say, conservatively four years. I think I'm right, Mr. Sorensen, don't you? Before that would be a pretty good starting point, correct. Yeah, and that, that's a hard that's a hard thing to accept. And it is um, it is not anything we would like. But when you're talking about the solution is building a new building, it takes a year just to build the building. It just, um, you know, the funding process um, through the county, all of that takes such a long time. And a new project being a bond referendum, you can't just snap your fingers and have those. And so we're looking at probably a year and a half or more before the money part of it would be solidified and then you've got to build it. So I can't see anything being built two and a half, three years, and then another year after that. So the river's edge folks, you know, like I said earlier, I don't want to put anybody in the position of being redistricted multiple times. And um, somebody asked in the chat to repeat the part I said earlier about Sadler Road. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna do that right now because it fits in. The, the problem with River's Edge is that we have two defined communities. We have the community that lives around River's Edge in very close proximity. And then we have the Sadler Road community that lives south of 295. In order to, you know, affect an immediate change, let's say, you know, I'm going to move people tomorrow. Um, we would have to, for example, take the whole Sadler Road, Road community, move them out of River's Edge, but we don't have anywhere to put them. So we don't want to divide a community. And so, for example, you know, a new elementary school or an addition could be put on either River's Edge or Springfield Park or Longan, for example, to accept um, a bigger capacity. And so that takes time. It takes engineers looking at all of this. And you have to look at the space you have, the land you have, what works in adding on to the building. Um, but with that comes infrastructure like i talked about earlier you've got to expand everything um so that this all takes long, a long time but short answer is i think we're looking at at least three to four years before we would have a solution in the building um edge of things miss kinsella did you want to add anything to that no i can just add that um to emphasize having gone through an elementary uh, eight class edition at Glen Allen Elementary School while my students were there. Actually, my kids didn't actually get to benefit from the expansion, um, but we're so excited um, that it was finally done. Um, they actually did expand the cafeteria at Glen Allen when they did the eight classrooms, but you do have to be very mindful to your point about the core infrastructure of the art room, the music room, you know, everything else that goes along with the school community, um, just just hosting an event in the gym. Um, it, it's a, it, this board, as Ms. Ogburn has said, we're trying to be very proactive in our planning and looking at our growth as it uh, relates to the capital plan and what projects um, board members and the board of supervisors uh, agree on that are priorities for us and where the county's going. So it, it it's, I know this conversation is a difficult one, but we really are um, thinking about it, listening to the committee, and this is this process right now really is only the priority areas. And in, like they said, we shifted our language from hotspot, but these areas we're discussing really are priorities. And having experienced, you know, children in overcrowded, overcrowded classrooms, that's how I got to be in this seat. Um, it actually motivated me to try and make a difference where I could. Um, my second grader was in a second grade classroom of 29 students. We are trying to prevent that from happening to your students. So we really appreciate your patience and support. Thank, thank you both for, for those explanations. We appreciate it. Sarah, thank you for your question. All right, who's next? The floor is open and it is only 645. So this is your time. Lindsay, I see you with your hand up. Go ahead with your question. Hi, yes. Mickey, I just want to say thank you for, hey, um, you know, hearing our 
concerns. Um, we live off of the um, Shady Grove Road, and so we are in biking and walking distance, so we appreciate the amendment um, to the plan. Can you speak a little bit to kind of what happens after today? Can we expect further changes to the map that you shared tonight, um, or should we um, look to see the same map uh, for the public hearing part? Um, can you speak to kind of the process from tonight on? Absolutely, Lindsay. Thank you for calling in. Chris, do you mind sharing the timeline again um, that you shared earlier? Basically, what we're going to do is we'll take all the feedback that we get tonight and um, and through our public forum this week at our school board meeting and our written comments. We um, also have um, public comment um, coming up with, with through Mrs. Kinsella's meeting on November 17th. And at that point, um, I think that we will basically say our maps are finalized, that this is the proposal that we're considering. Um, I, I think um, after tonight, we, Mrs. Kinsella and I will touch base with um, Chris Sorensen and Justin Briggs. Justin, uh, for those of you who came in late, Justin Briggs is our planner. And we will fine tune um, anything that needs to be fine tuned. We will work with our transportation folks and make sure that um, that we're solid in, in the way forward. Then at the December 10th, we will have a public hearing. And again, I think by then our maps will be firmly in place of what we expect, what we will consider. Now, one of the things we can consider, just so you know, is that uh, because we do have three hot spots, I think short of you know, holiday, we have a building we need to put students in. Um, that That's one thing I don't think we can delay. You know, if we get enough um, feedback from the public or we come up with a dis different solution, um, you know, the answer can be for any one of the three areas that we're considering that we will delay and we will wait for a comprehensive redistricting, for example, that's one possibility. But um, at, at, by the end of this month and before our December 10th meeting, um, we will have a final map, a final plan, and then we will have a public hearing on December 10th. And um, I think at that point, um, no more changes. I, would think that would be the way we would go. Wouldn't you think, Mr. Sorensen, no more changes after that point? I would believe so, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Lindsay, I hope that answers your question. We're looking at um, all options through the beginning of December, and then it'll be kind of finalized. We'll present this um, as a final option for consideration, get our public hearing, take the public's input, and then we mull it over, we keep looking, we keep thinking about it, and we make a decision, hopefully by the end of January, so people can know where their kids are going to school next year. All right, thank you. Thank you for reviewing that again, Mrs. Ogburn. And thank you, Lindsay, for your comments and your questions. Um, now um, we have Heidi. Heidi, feel y'all, I see your hand up again. Go ahead with your another question. Yeah, sorry. Um, Mickey, you mentioned written comments. Yeah. Do those just get emailed to you? I don't see a written comment box like we used to have um, with, the, with the comprehensive one. There was a link and you could go do the comments. I don't see that on the site. Maybe I'm missing it. Um, actually, those are for our meeting on Thursday. You can either do written public comment or in-person public comment because we have a school board meeting on Thursday. So if you have something you want to add for the whole board, um, you have a couple of options. You can do a public comment, written comment um, for Thursday, but you can also email all of the members of the board. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it. Ms. Kinsella, did I miss anything? I don't think yeah, I, you yeah. covered it. You got it. The, the best way that would be to what email all the school board members. Right. I think so. Or you can submit if you want it part of our meeting minutes. Part of the record. Our, we're on the record. Our that's what I was talking about. Our written comment for our meeting on Thursday. Thank you both. Next in line, we have Charlotte Ritt. Charlotte, go ahead with your question or comment. Are you there, Charlotte?
Charlotte, are you there? We're not hearing you right now. Okay, we hear you barely. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Um, my Charlotte I'm sorry, Charlotte. I, I don't think that anyone can hear you clearly. Charlotte, what, what I might recommend is if you type your, if you were able to type your question or comment into the chat. Are you still there? Okay, I think she's muted her mic now. I think maybe she's having some technical problems and we'll get back to her if, if, if she's able to uh, get her, her technical issues worked out. Right now, the floor is open. So if anyone else would like to, ha uh, has a question or would like to make a comment, go ahead and raise your hand. We're waiting. Folks, folks are here to listen to you. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes nobody wants to listen to you and we have several people here tonight wanting to listen. So go ahead. Savon is asking that we share the map again. Yes. So just so you can see the changes, this is the current uh, map, current zones, and these are the proposed changes. While you're looking at that, you know, you may have some questions that that bubble to the top. So feel free to jump in with a question if you have uh, questions or comments about the map while it's up. We'll leave it there for a little while for folks to to review it and get a good look at it. And uh, Charlotte Ritt is asking a question in the chat. Um, this is Kinsella. That one's one for you. Christy, it says, do the projections for Echo Lake take into consideration the students going to private school this year who will, be, who will return next year? Um, according to my numbers, I was actually looking at a spreadsheet of my numbers for Echo Lake. I mean, for we didn't specifically um, account for Justin or Chris. We didn't specifically account for those perhaps that went to private school um, in our projections, but our projections were pretty spot on um, yeah. for Echo Lake and Longin, correct? Correct. So, so, right, so when we did projections last year, of course, we had no idea that this was going to occur, so there's no way to, to project for folks going out. Um, and we're not doing projections this year or next year because uh, for, for, for the same reason, because of all the students. But looking at our numbers, um, long and is it 96% of, of where we projected? So we, we, we projected 450 students. The actual enrollment is 431. In Echo Lake, we projected 480. The enrollment is 452, so we're at 94 percent of our of, of the projection for Echo Lake. Did we answer your question? I think Charlotte was the one that was having some technical issues. So um, she also shared that she was, um, she's a short pump elementary parent with a first grader and a three-year-old and her house was zoned into Echo Lake a decade ago. So I'm just, I'm just sharing with you with what she um, added into the chat. All right, we've had another um, guest ask, what is the border road? between the yellow and red for Twi Twin Hickory Elementary. This. Um, um, the the southern board, the southern boundary where it says 12 um, running along that edge, that's Hame Road um, going up uh, running north south between the 12 and the 4th that is shady grove road i believe mm -hmm. and then um the uh the rest of it kind of juts around 
um, between the neighborhoods in there. And, and that is something I talked about earlier that if you now that that map, map is there that is so difficult for that area because we've got the um, area along Shady Grove Road that if we um, follow what the committee recommended uh, this area goes to Cackley and the reason for that and I want you just to imagine the area where it's 12 and 4 if we put those neighborhoods in Twin Hickory the neighborhood that is 141 will be an island off by itself. And um, it, it is, uh, was a concern to us that we would not, we didn't want to have Twin Hickory. Basically, if you're in the 141 area, which is on the other side of Knuckles Road, you would be driving through the Twin Hickory zone to get to Cackley. And so this was something that the committee really struggled with. How do we make this the area that on this map shows 141 students, which obviously you can't move 141 into Twin Hickory. We can't we can't re reunite and bring back together the whole Twin Hickory neighborhood and add these three um, areas as well. So we had to look at where is a dividing line that doesn't strand this 141 area. And, and if you look on the map, you'll see it right above at the right near the Shady Grove Twin Hickory border, the proposed border. We didn't want to make an island of any neighborhood. One thing we talked about earlier was trying to leave geographic areas together, leave communities together. And so the area where there's a 12 and a 14 and the 141, that we think that this does that. And it leaves this community that are so close together. Uh, together, but the area where Hame Road and if you go down on uh, Shady Grove and you go past what looks like a little hand sticking out there, there are mm. several small little developments there. Some construction is still ongoing. And um, so we looked at that specifically, as did the committee, as to what do we do so that we don't overwhelm one school or the other. And so the di dividing line became Hame Road. And um, so, but that that's just basically the explanation of that general area. Um, and that's Shady Grove Road, Hame Road, Shady Grove, all the way up to Knuckles. And somebody's asking what the implementation date is for redistricting. We hope to vote on this in January and um, students will start attending their new school next fall in 21. Thank you, Mrs. Ogburn, for jumping in there and uh, answering that question that popped up. Uh -huh. All right, I think Joe Garden has his hand up again. Joe, go ahead with your question or comment. All right, my, my wife has asked me to ask this question. Um, and she's my boss. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you follow you follow requests very well, instructions well. Um, could you bring that map back up real quick? Yep. Um, she was wondering, concerning the, the River's Edge area and that one little portion in the very northwest corner towards uh, Shady Grove. Yes. That's a community that is west of Shady Grove Road. Yes. Um, so did you all ever consider just shifting that one small community into the Shady Grove area we actually did and um that is an area when if you see there's a little faint line that the redistricting committee actually had decided to move that area to shady grove it involved 22 kids um and the ultimate decision was to wait and let comprehensive redistricting happen let's see what happens with the future of river's edge and the capacity issues there before we redistrict. And the main reason is, is that we don't want to redistrict families and neighborhoods any more than we have to. And so the thought was, if you look at the proximity to River's Edge, if in the future, in three or four years or whatever, we are able to expand uh, on one of our existing buildings or build a new elementary school in this area somewhere, that area would probably be shifted back to River's Edge. So looking at it, we felt like the right thing to do was to leave them where they are. And, and, uh, and they have been moved before, as you can imagine, 
um, in their proximity to Shady Grove. And that area is one that has been shifted um, before. So we just really wanted to, um, to wait. All right, thank you, Joe, for sharing your wife's question. And uh, is there anyone else that has a question or comment, specifically maybe about the map while that's up? Heidi, go ahead with your question. Thanks. I'm going to beat a dead horse. I said I wasn't okay. going to in the comments, but I'm going to because this is my chance to, yeah. right? That's right. So you mentioned, Mickey, that the 141, so that neighborhood off of Old Knuckles Road um, where that right. red and yellow meet, it's Old Knuckles Road. I can tell you for certain that the neighborhoods off Shady Grove Road, so Mill Race, Hames Lane, uh, Bridalwood, and Kensington, that is more of a community than that 141. That 141 is an island of itself because it's a townhome apartment complex all kind of enclosed, right? So it's okay. Shady Grove and Old Knuckles that kind of corners it off. Um, certainly we have friends there and, and, and play there just as much as we have friends anywhere else in Twin Hickory, but the 16 students to be added to that 141 for the sake of not making them an island, they're already an island based on where they're located and that cornered off section of Shady Grove and Old Knuckles. They're the only kind of buildings over there. And the rest of the Twin Hickory Red, other than what I think is almost a nearly finished development between um, Knuckles Road and Twin Hickory uh, Bend or Twin Hickory or Hickory Park um, right. that you can see when you're around Knuckles Road going across 295. That's it. There's no more new home development here in this red. Um, there's a, a church or something going up on the corner of Shady Grove and Twin Hickory, but that's that's not home development. And the the Shady Grove Estates, I think, is almost finished. So I would just I would just plead with you to consider those 16 students um, who, who can walk to school okay. right now. Well, what I'll do is um, Chris Sorensen and Justin uh, Briggs and I will uh, talk tomorrow. We'll look and see if there's anything we can do. Um, and maybe we can move the, sh you know, we'll just look at what's around there and how many students in the neighborhoods and we will do the best that we can. I, I, I will, if you would do me a favor, Heidi, if you would send me an email tomorrow, so I have your email address sure. and then that way I can let you know the progress of what we talk about. And I did. Yeah. Thank you. And I did have one other question. When you sure. get these numbers, do you guys look at the grades of this, like, are you considering fifth graders that will have moved on by 2021 in this count or is this current enrollment numbers? Justin, you want to take that one? So we're using, we're actually still using last year's numbers. Um, we feel that we're not going to see any major shifts from last year to next year because um, this year's, uh, these, this year's student counts are so off of what we typically see and um, we're operating under the assumption that the uh, students will be coming back after um, after things return more to normal. So, and we are um, we will be tracking uh, what the uh, the numbers that are coming in once we do go back to in person learning as well. So that may also um, have an impact. Does that answer your question? Uh, it does. I was just going to say, I know of four kids out of that 16 that would be gone. So I know, of course, I don't know of any kindergartners coming but, up. So but, that obviously. Uh, but to answer them. your question, too, um, we, we were also operating on the assumption that there will be a consistent number of overall, of fifth, relatively, of fifth graders um, per year. Um, so we, uh, yeah. All right, thank you, Heidi, for providing uh, that input and asking those additional questions and for taking taking advantage of this opportunity. Next in line, we have Jessica and Doug Erickson. Please go ahead with your question or comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, go ahead. Great, quick question for you. I'm wondering about the new neighborhoods that are being built right at Pouncey Track and Twin Hickory Lake. Um, and I'm, I, it looks to me, are those still going to be with Colonial Trail or are those redistricted over to Twin Hickory as well? Justin, do you mind looking at that and see? Um, I'm not sure on this map that we're looking at where Twin Hickory Lake is. Um, 
I think it's that black line right sort of to the right of the 149 number, but I could be wrong there. <laughs> well, no, maybe not actually. I don't know. Because well, Justin, um, he, he's in control of those, the maps, and he and Chris can point on the map and tell us where you're talking about. When Hickory Lake Drive and Pouncy Tract? Correct. Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo. So um, at that intersect at that intersection, the uh, northeast corner would be uh, rezoned from Colonial Trail to Twin Hickory. However, the southeast corner, which is where the uh, the proposed uh, mixed use development is going in, would stay at Colonial Trail. Okay, thank you. And are those numbers reflected in the new population numbers for both schools? No. Uh, um, we we won't have those until they're being um, built. We do track development. We have a development log, um, and they uh, the those kinds of developments don't typically generate large numbers of students. Um, for instance, the uh, Libby Mill apartments only have one student in them. Um, the West Broad Landing Village. <clears throat> apartments, not the townhomes. They have 14 students living in over 300 um, apartments. So there's not, we're not anticipating a major impact on Colonial Trail from the new development. Great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you so much, Jessica, for your question. Um, we have Savan with us this yeah. evening and she is having some mic issues. Uh, she wants to know what is area 39 on the map? Is that Sadler Road going to Springfield Park? It, right, so the, the area that's the dark orange and the lighter orange, those are 39 students going from Rivers Edge to Springfield Park, yes. That, and they are on the east, they are on the eastern edge of uh, Innsbruck. The Rivers, the Sadler Corridor is on the western edge, so closer to Twin Hickory. So those, that would not be uh, Sadler Road. All right, thank you both. And thank you, Savon, for um, for your question. We hope that that gave you the information you needed. Next in line, we have JH. JH, go ahead with your question or comment. Be sure you unmute your mic. Are you there, JH? All right, maybe they're having some technical issues as well. You can always type your questions in the chat if, or, you know, if you don't get in. Is there anyone else with, uh, with a question or comment while we're waiting on JH? He says he's here. No, we can't hear you. <laughs> if you can hear me, JH, just go ahead and, and type your question out or your comment as Mrs. Ogburn stated, and we will, we will address it. While we're waiting, is there anyone else that has a question? We have plenty of time. So if you would, would like to provide some input on the proposals or you have additional questions, now is your opportunity to address them to the school board and have, have them considered as they're making decisions for the proposal. And, and I'm going to remind whoever JH is that if you if we cannot hear you, so if you could type your message in the chat, we'll be able to read it out and, um, and and get your question or, you know, answered or listen to your comment. All right, the floor is open. Is there anyone else that would like to make a comment or provide input? Okay, J.H. has, yeah, there we All go. All right, let's, let's see. J.H. says, I'll, I'm gonna read it in case those um, there are those that maybe can't get to the chat. 
I want to echo Heidi. Please reconsider moving the 16 Twin Hickory students. I have students in that number who have been at Twin Hickory and have long relationships at Twin Hickory. And it would be difficult for the students, especially in this climate, to move such a small group. Okay, Thanks. I really appreciate that comment. And like I said earlier, we will um, look at what we can do. Um, as I said, I don't want to make that, if you look at this map, that number of 141 an island. And I don't want to have the district, uh, the attendance zone for Cackley divided in that way. So we will look at the possibilities and see if we can come up with something else. I, you know, these maps are not solid at this point. So we will, um, we will put Justin to work tomorrow and make sure that Justin is considering all the possibilities that we have. But I do appreciate the feedback. That's why we're here. Thank you again, J.H. Um, Emily French has has dropped a question into the chat. Emily asks, how does the county building approval, how do the county building approvals work with the schools in regard to building new neighborhoods? Can new buildings be prevented in overcrowded school zones? That's that's great question. A, that is a great question. Um, great it is question. one that we, <laughs> we talk about all the time. Uh, one of the things we are very fortunate, we have a, uh, on the school side, we have a great working relationship with our county government and the, um, Justin Briggs will tell you um, that they have a good relationship with the planning commission and um, the zoning board to let us know when proposals come for de from developers to, you know, build a new neighborhood, build a new shopping center, whatever it is. And, um, they are really good about about looking at the effects of anything. That's why when Justin was asked about that development at the corner of of uh, Twin Hickory Lake Drive, he knows the numbers. He knows this. This is what he does. He lives in the numbers zone, and so he knows what kind of developments are coming, and he can look at um, whether those developments that are proposed to the county will have an effect on schools, and so. Um, before it gets to the planning commission and and all of that, they do check with us. So the approvals work in this sort of that a developer, let's say, for example, picks an area of land. They want to build houses on apartments, whatever they are, and they get in touch with the, the um, zoning board and the planning board um, in the county. And it goes through an approvals process. They look at the proposal. They look at the type of development, the type of home, the type of business, what have you. In a lot of the new developments, it's a combination of homes and uh, business. Then they will have public hearings to uh, input, just like we're doing right now, to seek input from the community. Is this a, a, a development that might um, be of interest to the community or comes with it? And so they go through this whole long process. They work with engineers and architects and developers, and they check with schools. And then they go through that hearing process. It goes before the planning commission. Once the planning commission approves it, then it goes to the board of supervisors for approval. So this is not something that happens overnight, as you can imagine. So uh, one of the things we as schools have the opportunity to do is say to the planning commissioners and the board of supervisors, this will be the impact on schools. And if there is going to be a huge impact, what are we going to do? How are we going to handle that impact? And so um, developments are sometimes not approved because of the impact on schools. But the area of River's Edge, the area um, in the northern part of Brooklyn, Mrs. Kinsella will tell you that is available land. And that is a very highly sought after part of the county. And so a, a lot of development is going in, but um, can it be prevented only by the planning commission and the board of supervisors and with feedback through that process? Ms. Kinsella, did you have if, something? If I, if I might, I mean, Justin, you, you would be able to clarify. I believe a, um, a great deal of what Ms. Ogburn just described was part of the rezoning Mm -hmm. Not not just zoning, which is when a property is zoned for um, a certain use, then 
the building, the, the planning department wouldn't wouldn't decline it, correct, Mrs. Ogburn or Justin? That's it's always. the rezoning, it's the rezoning process to which is open to the public hearings and all of the additional analysis. Right. Um, correct well, outside of I'm, yeah, I'm, the, I believe so, yes. The planning and, commission does have hearings as well as okay. far as the impact of developments. And you'll see those little blue signs that go up along the roadside. They'll say that an, a, a zoning or planning commission uh, meeting is coming up. You can also look at their list. Um, or they have a website where they talk about what they're going to be considering. And so sometimes the planning commission will tell a developer, for example, go back to the drawing board and, uh, for example, in an area where a school is overcrowded, they might say, if it's an apartment complex, we'd like to see more one and two bedroom um, apartments that um, oftentimes will have produced few, have fewer families living in them. So the Planning Commission does work closely. Um, and Justin, why don't you fill us in on, on from there? I know. Yeah. So I, I just want I just wanted to add on that um, even if they if it, if it's not subjected to rezoning, we do get um, we do get uh, information on the new developments that are going in. They you know you have different types of um, you have the plans to develop, and you have the subdivision development. There's all sorts of uh, all sorts of ways to uh, <clears throat> to uh, to build a subdivision or some other kind of development. Um, but we do get that information and we do track it as well. So that is also going into the development log. Well, and we do give feedback. I mean, Justin um, just recently sent board members copies of planning commission reports where he had to uh, tell the planning commissioners what the impact on schools was going to be for a proposed development. And so that does happen all the time. But to be honest, and we can see the results of it all across the county, there are times when um, development is approved. I think Mrs. Ogburn has her, her, her teams may have frozen up. Are you back with us, Mrs. Ogburn? You froze up there for a minute. <laughs> Um, it's it's there we go. Um, you'll see that, for example, in the northern part near River Mill, um, where River Mill is being built, and now we're having a, it's a large development. And Miss Kinsella can talk about that, not me. But where it it's a large development, hundreds of homes. What are we going to do? So yes, that's a, it's a process. Okay, Emily, we thank you for that question, um, and thank you all for that that. Um, but very helpful um, explanation of how that process works because we all know it is not a simple process and, and not a not a short process. So thank you for explaining that. All right, last call for questions and comments. The floor is open. Is there anyone else that has a question or comment? All right, Kate has dropped a comment into the chat. Well, is there anyone else that would like to share a comment or ask a question? All right, Mrs. Ogburn and Mrs. Kinsella, would you like to uh, share some closing remarks? Sure, Christy, you go first. I'm just going to be brief and just thank everyone uh, for joining us this evening. And if you have any comments at all, please um, leave them at public hearing for, for the school board if you wish to do so out online. Um, they've dropped the link in the chat. I'm sure they could drop it again. Um, if you would like to speak to either Ms. Ogburn or myself, please give us a call or send us an email. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We work for you. So let us know what you think. Thank you again for coming tonight. Absolutely. I echo that. Thank, uh, we just are so appreciative that you take the time out of your day to let us hear from you what your questions and concerns are. And uh, again, to Sean and to Chris and to Justin and the other staff members who are in the background making this all work. We thank you for taking your evening uh, time away from your family to to serve the greater Enrico family. And uh, because when we work it all together, it's, it's been a great group to work with, great questions. Um, 
I, I urge you to uh, connect with your neighbors, let them know what's going on and be a part of the process as we go forward. Um, we will be meeting tomorrow or in the next day or two to look at the area of, of the, the 12 and the four that we talked about earlier. But, uh, but anyway, thank you all so much for, for being with us. We appreciate it. And thank you to our school board and members of the HTPS team for listening this evening. As always, we value your input and appreciate your participation. This concludes tonight's session. Have a great evening.